Biology. So let's now look at kidney diseases. So the kidney diseases that, uh, that are there. So the first one, let's begin with the first one, which is uremia. So uremia, this is a condition whereby there is some concentration and traces of urine in the blood. So that's a condition which is called uremia, whereby there is some concentration and traces of urine in the blood. So as you can see, this is a patient who has that condition which is referred to as now the uremia. As you can see, the skin seems yellowish and somewhat has some rashes. So that is now the uremia. So remember, remember uremia, anytime you hear uremia, it means that there are some traces of urine, uh, of urea in the blood. So what are the symptoms of uremia? So the first symptom of uremia is that there's the yellow coloration of the skin. So apart from yellow coloration of the skin, there's the smell of urine in the breath. So if this person speaks to you cl closely, you are going to hear some somewhat like smell of urine in their breath. After that, uh, these people experience nausea and also they experience uh, vomiting-like symptoms. So nausea, vomiting, and some extent they also experienced high fever. So these are some of the symptoms of uremia. But what are the treatments and control of uremia? So how can you be able to protect yourself from getting these diseases? So what are the treatments and control? So the first one is early diagnosis to detect the problem. So that is always the first treatment and control, early diagnosis. So if it can be able to be detected earlier, it, you can be able to be treated even faster and the disease might, might not make even a stride in the body of the victim. So early diagnosis to detect and eliminate the problem. So apart from early diagnosis to detect, we also have kidney dialysis in order to remove excess urea from the blood. So the patient can also undergo uh, kidney dialysis in order to remove excess urea from the blood because the reason as to why there's this problem in the first place is that there is a high content of urea in the blood which is abnormal. So if one undergoes under kidney dialysis, so excess urea is going to be removed off from their blood. Apart from that, uh, the other treatment and control is eating low diet of proteins and salts, especially sodiums and potassium salts. So these are very strong salts. So anything having sodium and potassium, those salts are very much strong when it comes to impact in the body. So what is advised to eat salt uh, that is low in, prote in potassium and sodium, as well as eat low diet of protein. Don't be that person uh, whereby if you go to a party or anywhere, you take all the meat, you fill your plate with a lot of meat and eat that meat. You are bringing problems to your body because we're going to see that another disease of the kidney is referred to as gout. So gout is the other disease of the kidney, whereby gout is a very, uh, it's a very bad disease, whereby we now have uric acid deposited on the joints, on the small joints of the phalanges and the metatarsals of the body. So let's look at this disease which is now referred to as gout. So what is gout exactly? So simply gout, this is a complex form of uh, form of, of this of arthritis whereby some uric acid may be formed between the joints of the body. So it's a very much complicated form of arthritis whereby uric acid may not be deposited on the joints of the body as you can see. This explains gout. So you see that it's a normal foot and then the other foot is a foot which has a gouted foot. So gout is very much painful. So if much uric acid is deposited on the joints of the body, so that disease is referred to as gout. How is it that uric acid is formed? Uric acid is formed by the breakdown of excess proteins in the body. So that causes uric acid to be deposited on the joints of the body. If uric acid will be deposited on the joint of the body, remember, this is an acid. If this acid is deposited on the joints of the body, therefore it will remember it will mean that it will start to burn the tissues uh, which are found on that joint. So the burning of these tissues causes a lot of pain. It can also uh, it can also cause impairing of movement due to too much pain. So what are the causes of gout? What exactly brings gout? So the first cause of gout is obesity. So people who are 
who are obese, they have a very high chance of getting this disorder which is referred to as gout. Also apart from that, high blood pressure is another very common cause of gout. Apart from that, we have diabetes, especially diabetes mellitus. So we have diabetes and then apart from diabetes, kidney problems. Kidney problems mostly point towards this disease which is referred to as the gout that we have just seen. Apart from kidney problems, we have drinking alcohol. So the, pre so the people who engage in alco alcoholism, they have a very high chance, be it that you are old, be it that you are young. So people having this disorder have a very high chance of getting, of getting gout. So the people who drink alcohol rather have a very high chance of getting gout. Apart from that, eating food high in protein so if you are that person who likes eating a lot of meat every day every time eating eggs every day every time you are having you are risking getting this disorder which is referred to as gout gout is a very bad disease to eliminate that uric acid from the joints is not easy gout can make someone to be unable to operate uh, on daily activity if it enters into the hands it's not possible it is very painful for you to move even the hands like this if you have that gout because uric acid has been deposited on the joints gout can also impair movement these people having gout if it's deposited on the joints of the knee of the toes so these people will not be able to move because if they try to move there is a lot of excruciating pain that may cause impairing of that movement so apart from that let's now look at the signs and the symptoms of gout so the first sign and symptom of gout is joint swelling and joint pain. So joint swelling and joint pain, that is always the first symptom of gout. So if you're feeling pain on this finger, then the doctor takes a look at this finger and sees that this joint is very much swollen. So the first and the immediate diagnostic the doctor will make will make is that. So this person is suffering from gout because it's only gout that makes uh, like okay it's gout which is most common that makes the, the joints to swell if they are going to do their test they are going to find that there are some traces of acid so it will automatically point towards you are suffering gout so there is joint pain and joint swelling so the joint whereby that person is feeling pain you'll see that it has kind of swollen so apart from that there is pain during walking and pain during daily activities so there is pain in walking pain do, uh, in doing daily activities so that is another one so apart from that there is also fatigue and then may also lead to kidney stones development of kidney stones whereby kidney stones these are um, stone like structures made up of calcium which are deposited on the pelvis of the kidney so remember we studied the pelvis so the kidney we say that it has three major parts the cortex the medulla the pelvis so pelvis is this part of the kidney whereby urine passes from the medulla and into the pelvis. So the pelvis now takes the urine to the ureter. The ureter connects the bladder. The bladder connects the urethra. The urethra then facilitates the removing of urine from the body to the external genitalia. So these stones may block the pelvis. If they block the pelvis, urine passage will not be possible. There will be the development of high pressure inside the kidney, whereby this high pressure may lead to the rupture of kidney and therefore lead to kidney failure. So one problem, gout will lead to the next problem, which is kidney stones. Kidney stones will lead to the next problem, which is kidney failure. Kidney failure will lead to a problem which is referred to as kidney transplant. It's a problem because for you to get that kidney, to buy that kidney for transplantation is very expensive. So just to avoid all these problems, avoid excess proteins, avoid ex excess alcohol, just avoid the causative agents for these diseases, uh, for this disease. Apart from that, the other symptom is strange lumps around joints. So that one, uh, I think we have said, we have talked about the strange lumps around the joint. So like along the joint regions, like in the joints of the arm, the joints of the hand, so you are going to realize that there's the strange lumps on the joints, even on the joints of the wrist whereby mm, there might be that disorder, there might be that pain. So if you look at that joint, you are going to realize that also there are some swelling. So there are going to be strange lumps on the joints whereby there is pain. So strange lumps will be there. So treatment and control of this disease. So treatment and control, avoid excess intake of alcohol, 
exercise in order to burn excess fat, to burn excess carbohydrates, and also to burn excess proteins if they are possible. So after that is that, uh, apart from exercising, take a lot of fluids. After taking a lot of fluids, early diagnosis to detect the problem. Because if this disorder is detected early enough, it's going to be easier for the doctors to treat the disease. So early diagnosis to detect the problem. So that is also right. So the next disease, let's now look at kidney stones. So kidney stones is now the next disease which I've just mentioned. So what is this kidney stones? So basically we see that these kidney stones are solid deposits of calcium and other salts inside the kidney nephrons. So inside the kidney nephrons. So these stones might become large enough and also block the pelvis. So they are usually formed from the pelvis of the kidney where they may obstruct the flow of urine. So that is whereby they are mainly formed in the pelvis. Okay, they may be formed in the nephron, but the major part that these stones may be formed and may cause a great impact is now the pelvis of the kidney. So as you can see, this diagram, so this diagram tries to illustrate the kidney stones. So in the pelvis, you can check that stone where that stone has been deposited. So if it deposited there, it flows, it may block the the pelvis which may block also the passage of urine now from the kidney to the ureta. So this may lead to kidney failure and then the kidney failure may also lead to now that kidney being removed altogether. So what are the causes of kidney, uh, kidney stones? So the first cause of kidney stones is high concentration of salts in the body. Because remember I say that kidney stones is caused by mineral ions like excess mineral ions in the blood like calcium deposits. So, excess intake of salts in the body, whereby every time you eat, you must add salt. Every time you eat, you must add salt. That is very dangerous. Uncooked salt is very dangerous. So, high concentration of salts in the body may lead to kidney stones. Apart from that is poor diet. So, if you also undertake poor diet of only eating proteins or eating uh, less of carbohydrates, less of fruits, everything, vitamins, but protein intake is very high. So if you engage in that poor diet, you may, you are also susceptible to getting kidney stones. Apart from that, drinking less water. So if you drink less water, it may cause kidney stones. So drink plenty of water, drink adequate water. After that is poor exercising habits. After you have eaten, you just like to sit down and watch. After that, the next meal comes, you again eat and watch. After that, you go and eat nyamachoma, you go and eat this and that, and then you don't do exercise, you just sit there and watch. So there is this buildup of protein, there is this buildup of urea in the, in the body, there is this buildup of unused mineral ions in the body, which may lead now to this disorder, which is now the kidney stones. And then, obesity. Obesity is always there. Obesity has very many disadvantages other than advantages. So this person who is obese also risks high blood pressure as we saw. This person who is obese also ris risks gout as we saw. This person who is obese also risks kidney failure. This person who is obese also risks uh, heart failure and also risks stroke because of arteriosclerosis and arteriosclerosis. So also we see obesity is here. Obesity, this person who have obesity, they have a risk of getting kidney stones. So if you know your BMI is going towards obese, please try to check, um, uh, try to, just try to do something and lose weight. Because obesity is bad. Obesity leads to more harm than good. So obesity is, is also another cause for kidney, uh, kidney, the kidney failure and the kidney stones that you are looking at. So obesity is, is not good, obesity is not good. So apart from that, we have weight loss surgery due to the drugs that people use. So those drugs, those chemicals people use can also really much cause uh, these kidney stones as well as infection and also family history. So if there's a family history of your people have ever gotten kidney stones, so it's genetic. So chances of this person here getting kidney stones are very high. So also uh, family history is also another factor that can cause. So what are the symptoms of? So the symptoms of kidney failure, first of all, there is blood in urine. 
Why is there blood in urine? Because as that kidney stone is trying to be forced down the pelvis to go down the ureter, it scratches, it scratches the walls of the ureter, etc. So after scratching the walls uh, through which it's passing, it's going, to, it's going to make bruises in the blood vessels, bruises in the ureter. So these bruises are going to release blood. So if this person has, going, has gone to excrete or produce or remove urine, so they are going to notice that there will be blood in the urine. So that is where the blood from the urine comes from, from the kidney stones. Also, there is frequent urination. So this frequent urination is not much urine. So now you go and urinate very low quantity of urine. After five minutes, you feel very much like you, want, you need to go to urinate. If you go, you again pass very low amount of urine. So periodically, you go to urinate very low urine. Again, after two minutes, very low urine. After seven minutes, very low. So there is frequent urination because as that stone has blocked the pelvis, so the urine, the very low urine that has managed to pass out, you will feel like going out. So if you go to, to pass it out, you are going to realize that it is only very low that has come out. But still, I feel like I need to push more. If you push more, it gets us now to the next symptom whereby there is pain on the upper back side when passing urine. So there is pain when urinating. So that is the other symptom. So there is pain when urinating. There is pain in the upper back side. So these people also have chills and fever. Apart from that, there are different calcium deposits in urine. So if we take that urine for that person, we do a test, we are going to realize that there are calcium deposits in the urine. Apart from that, there is also nausea and then nausea and fever-like symptoms also develop. So these are the symptoms of kidney stones. So the ones that you have listed among others. So what are the treatments and control for kidney stones? So the first treatment and control always is early diagnosis to detect the problem. Because if the problem can be able to be detected early enough, so this person can be able to be treated before it escalates to dangerous levels. Apart from that, eat balanced diet. So always eat balanced diet. So apart from eating balanced diet, use laser beams to disintegrate and destroy the stones in the kidney. So this is a surgery that must be done by the medical personnel. So use of laser beams to destroy or disintegrate the stones found in the kidney. So apart from that, uh, these people are also advised to take painkiller drugs, pain relieving drugs, in order to reduce the pain when passing urine. It's a temporary remedy, but they are advised to take pain-killing drugs. Apart from that, we have surgery to remove the stones. In excess scenarios, this person is advised to go for surgery, whereby the kidney will be split open, the stones will be removed, and then it will be stitched open. So surgery to remove the stone. So the other treatment and control, you can say, taking hot baths and massage will really help to not get kidney stones. So taking hot baths and massage as well as engaging in vigorous exercise. So these ones will really much help to disintegrate, to destroy the stones inside the body. So let's go to the next disease. So the next disease is nephritis. So nephritis is the other disease. So nephritis basically talks about the glomerulus. So for the nephritis, we see that this is an infection of the glomerulus of the kidney. So the glomerulus is affected. Automatically, we know that if the glomerulus is affected, ultrafiltration will be impaired because glomerulus ultrafiltration takes place. There is no protein in urine. Uh, there are no, yeah, there's no protein in urine. There are no blood cells in urine. But in nephritis, since the glomerulus is affected, therefore all these disorders will come about. So. Nephritis, this is an infection, inflammation of the glomerulus of the kidney. So this, poor, this leads to poor ultrafiltration, whereby blood cells and proteins may be found in the urine. So for this diagram, you can see, this is a healthy kidney. So the healthy kidney is light red, it's very healthy. But for the inflamed kidney, as you can see, the inflamed kidney is dark red. So this is a healthy kidney that is an unhealthy kidney. So what are the causes of this disorder which is referred to as nephritis? So what are the causes? 
So the first cause is bacterial infection. Bacterial infection is one of the major causes of nephritis. Apart from that, it is genetic. Yeah, it's genetic. So if one of the family member had nephritis, so the offspring have a very high chance of getting also nephritis. So this disorder is genetic. So bacterial infection and also genetic. So that the signs and symptoms of nephritis. So the signs and symptoms of nephritis, the, the first one is headache and fever. That's the first symptom, headache and fever, because there is too much, uh, there is too much urea in the blood. There is too much toxins in the blood. Glomerulus is not functioning. So there is headache and fever. Apart from that, there is vomiting. So apart from vomiting, there is edema or oedema. Edema or edema is that the tissues of the body, if, you, if that person affected, if you feel the tissues of the body like this, you're going to feel like it's spongy. There's some traces of water. So it's spongy like that. So it's like there are some traces of water. There are some fluid under the skin tissue. That is oedema. There are some fluids under the skin tissue. So a person like that, it points towards they are suffering from this disorder, nephritis. Also, there is sore throat or tonsillitis. So sore throat or tonsillitis, whereby they can have a sore throat or they can have tonsillitis affecting the palatine tonsils on the throat, having inflammations, as you can see. So they may also suffer from this disorder, tonsillitis. After that, there may be blockage of the glomeruli by the antibody antigen complex. There might be the blockage of the glomerulus. So if the glomerulus will be blocked, remember, ultrafiltration will not take place. So if ultrafiltration does not take place, urine will not be formed. This will be a problem which will lead to another problem. So there will be the blockage of the glomeruli by the anti antibody antigen complex which try to eliminate the problem. So they are trying to eliminate the problem. Finally, or by bad luck, they may block now the, the glomerulus completely. So what are the treatments and control of nephritis? So the first treatment and control of nephritis is what? Early diagnosis to detect the problem. So early diagnosis, this really much helps because if the problem can be able to be detected early enough, so it can be able to be eliminated even early enough. So the other control treatment uh, control is that treat using, mm, treat using relevant antibiotics. So treat using antibiotics because you have said that it can be caused by a bacteria. So if this disorder is not genetic, it was caused by a bacteria. So make sure to treat it using the relevant antibiotics. As well, apart from that, avoid too much proteins, uh, proteinous meals. So too much proteinous meals lead to one or more problems. Apart from that, avoid meals that are rich in salt, especially sodium chloride. So avoid adding raw salt in food, avoid food rich in salts, etc. So we're going to control this disorder which is referred to as the uh, nephritis, which is referred to as nephritis. Biology.